Welcome to Dermatology Explained. Today's video presentation is focused on subcutaneous paniculitis-like T-cell lymphoma. This is the next video in our video series on cutaneous T-cell lymphomas. If you haven't seen our previous video in this series, such as the one on mycosis fungoides, then please view our playlist on cutaneous T-cell lymphomas. So what is subcutaneous paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma or SPTCL? This is a rare primary cutaneous lymphoma which mimics paniculitis in its appearance. It is localized to the subcutaneous tissue and usually does not involve the lymph nodes. It is composed of cytotoxic alpha-beta T-cells and is distinct from a more aggressive group comprised of gamma-delta T-cells, which make up the gamma-delta T-cell lymphoma. In terms of the epidemiology, less than 1% of non-Hodgkin lymphomas is comprised of subcutaneous paniculitis like T-cell lymphoma. It has a slight bias for females. It can occur in both adults and children, and the average age of onset is 36 years. In terms of the pathophysiology, it is thought that it is due to the migration of neoplastic T cells to the adipocyte membranes. This is thought to be facilitated by CCR5 on the neoplastic T cells. Ligands for CCR5, such as CCL3, CCL4, and CCL5, are located on the adipocyte membrane, which allows for the migration of T cells to this area. Traditionally, subcutaneous paniculitis-like T-cell lymphoma is thought to have two distinct forms, a form based on the alpha-beta types of T-cells and a form based on the gamma-delta type of T-cells. The alpha-beta form is indolent and has markers CD8 positive. The gamma-delta form is aggressive and has markers CD56 positive. Based on the current World Health Organization and European Organization for Research and Treatment of Cancer, WHO EORTC guidelines, the terminology subcutaneous paniculitis T cell, paniculitis like T cell lymphoma specifically refers to the alpha beta form of T cell lymphoma, whereas the aggressive gamma delta form of T cell lymphoma has its own separate classification group. In terms of cl clinical features of subcutaneous paniculitis-like T-cell lymphoma, these can present with multiple subcutaneous plaques and nodules. It is usually on the lower and upper extremities of the body or the trunk. There may be some overlying erythema. It is usually painless and the lesions range from 0.5 to 2 centimeters in size. There may be multiple lesions in different stages of healing. Typically, there is no ulceration associated with the lesions. Systemic symptoms occur in 50% of cases, and this may include fevers, chills, weight loss, cytopenias, myalgias, as well as liver function enzyme derangements, worsening. Here are some further images which demonstrate reported cases of subcutaneous paniculitis-like T-cell lymphoma in the literature. On the left-hand side, we have some active lesions on the top picture, whereas on the bottom picture, we have some improvement seen after five cycles of the CHOP chemotherapy regime. There's several more pictures on the right-hand side demonstrating different clinical appearances of subcutaneous paniculitis-like T-cell lymphoma. As you can appreciate from these images, they do have an appearance similar to other differentials for paniculitis. These are some images from a JAD CME focused on cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. We can see here is another example, demonstrating a large erythematous to bilaceous indurated plaques on the lower extremities associated with subcutaneous nodules and plaques with some areas of lipoatrophy. The histological appearance is demonstrated on the right-hand side. In terms of the associations, 
Subcutaneous paniculitis-like T-cell lymphoma can be associated with cytopenias and transaminitis in the liver function enzyme tests. It can have associated auto antibodies with autoimmune diseases, including systemic lupus erythematosus, sarcoidosis, dermatomyositis, Schrogen's syndrome, and rheumatoid arthritis, occurring in 13% to 14% of patients. Complications that are associated with subcutaneous paniculitis-like T-cell lymphoma include hepatosplenomegaly, mucosal ulcers, serosal effusions, pancytopenia, and most significantly, hemophagocytic syndrome, or HPS. This is a issue which progresses rapidly and has a poor prognosis. 46% survival at five years instead of 80%. It is characterized by excessive immune activation, fever, splenomegaly, hemophagocytosis in the bone marrow, spleen, lymph nodes, and liver. Lab abnormalities include cytopenias, hypertriglyceridemia, and hyperferritinemia. The histological appearance of subcutaneous paniculitis-like T-cell lymphoma includes subcutaneous infiltrates simulating a lobular paniculitis. The infiltrate is often lymphocytic with variable amounts of histiocytes and lipophages. There is some rimming of individual fat cells by neoplastic T cells. Immunophenotyping demonstrates cells which express CD3, CD8, CD45RO, TIA1, perforin, granzyme B, and T cell receptor alpha and beta. Neoplastic T cells demonstrate a clonal T cell receptor gene re rearrangement. One of the most common histological differentials for this condition is lupus paniculitis, and it is often very difficult to distinguish between these two on histology. Subcutaneous paniculitis like T cell lymphoma is more associated with a cytotoxic immunophenotype which is uncommon in lupus paniculitis. This may be a helpful distinguishing feature. It has also been suggested that KI67 and retention of CD7 is more associated with subcutaneous paniculitis-like T-cell lymphoma. Aggregates of CD123, plasma cytoid dendritic cells, and lymphoid follicles with germinal centers, as well as mucin deposition, is more characteristic of lupus paniculitis. What are some other differentials of subcutaneous paniculitis like T cell lymphoma? It can mimic a variety of conditions, including benign paniculitis, eczema, psoriasis, cellulitis, and soft tissue infections. As alluded to earlier, it can look like lupus paniculitis. Various other forms of cutaneous T cell lymphomas are in the differential, including primary cutaneous CD4 plus C T cell lymphoma and primary cutaneous acral CD8 plus T cell lymphoma. Cutaneous B cell lymphomas and pseudo lymphomas are certainly in the differential as well. In terms of management option for this rare condition, there is no established therapy. Treatment options that have been described include oral corticosteroids with or without low-dose methotrexate, cyclosporin, radiotherapy, and aggressive forms can be treated with a combination of chemotherapy with consideration of stem cell transplant. These patients should be managed in conjunction with the hematology team in a multidisciplinary setting. Thank you for joining us in this video presentation today. I hope you've learned something useful about subcutaneous paniculitis-like T-cell lymphoma. If you haven't already, you can check out our other videos in our video series on cutaneous T-cell lymphomas and other videos in our channel that's dedicated to looking at dermatology topics. I look forward to seeing you in the next video presentation. Thank you.